Boltworks Today is a viewer-supported show. To learn more on how you can get involved and watch extended ad-free versions of these videos, please visit our website, boltworkstoday.com, and click on the top of the heading where it says support this show. Thank you. <laughs> what is going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well. My name is Andy with Boltworks Today, and in this video, we're doing a little bit of an experiment. So as many of you know, I'm in the middle of doing some work on the forward deck of this Bertram because, well, there's a little bit of a springy issue going on up there. It's just kind of soft and almost trampoline-like. And one of the things that I, I'm going to try and do up there to try and, and mitigate that is I want to lay up some additional glass over the forward deck just to kind of help, I guess, again, build some stiffness and some rigidity. We'll see if it works. But regardless, regardless if, if that actually fixes it, it, it still needs to get done. But, but anyways. Uh, so going through the thought process as far as what kind of glass and resin I want to be using, it kind of popped up a question that, you know, I guess it's something that I've always taken, you know, taken for granted and never really put the screws to it to actually test. But, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about the, the process of, you know, vinyl ester versus polyester or in, a, in epoxies, different types of epoxies, you know, it's always been pretty well held that, you know, epoxy will give you a, a stiffer, stronger laminate. And I, I'm not going to disagree with that. But where the question comes up for me is, well, how big of a difference is there really between, say, like an epoxy versus a polyester or a vinyl ester? That's what I want to find out today. So for doing this experiment, I'm going to cut four strips of 1708. They're going to be equal width, equal length, and they're all coming off the same sheet, just trying to keep everything a as similar as possible. And the resins I'm going to be using for this are going to be the Total Boat polyester resin, as well as the 5 to 1 and the 2 to 1 epoxy, as well as a can of vinyl ester resin that I had left over from when I did the transom on the whaler. And just to make sure I don't fiberglass each of these strips down my workbench, I'm going to lay down some plastic, and then once everything is cured, everything should lift back off, you know, pretty nicely. <laughs> Now this next resin I'm going to be using is vinyl ester and just like polyester anytime a can's been sitting for a little while you got to give it a good shake get all the solids mixed back in with the uh, with the resin let me go grab a wrench I can't get the lid off <laughs> And vinyl ester essentially gets catalyzed the exact same way as polyester. And as a general rule, looking at about 12 drops per ounce. And I've only got two ounces poured up here, so I kind of need to eyeball it a little bit. But I think this is going to be enough. One of the little signs that I look for is if the resin itself turns, turns a, a darker color, well, then you got enough catalyst in there. 
And I should say, I think that this resin is still good. Uh, vinyl ester only has like a three month shelf life. So I think it's still good, but I don't, I won't, I, I can't say for sure. I guess we'll find out tomorrow. So now we got everything wetted out, now we just wait. Uh, before I leave tonight, I'm gonna, well the epoxy, the, the, the two to one and the five to one epoxies, they're fine, I don't need to do anything more with them, they'll cure overnight and be ready to go by morning. But the poly and the vinyl, before I leave tonight, I'll come back after this resin has set up and just give it a light coat of PVA. Now normally, you know, normally I usually go through and, and top coat it with gel coat and then PVA. Uh, but that's when I'm actually going to be finishing the surface. You know, I don't want to add gel coat to this because then it's going to uh, create the thickness and then it's no longer going to be an apples to apples comparison between these strips. So I am going to, uh, to walk away and, uh, well, let the stuff do its thing. Good morning. It is the following day. So now everything has had plenty of time to cure and it should be all set and ready to go. Uh, let's just hope that these strips didn't weld themselves to the plastics. <laughs> let's see how it goes. And just to make sure that I keep everything straight here. I'm going to label these real quick. So this is the two to one. This is the five to one. This is the vinyl. And this is the poly. All right. Let's see. Well, let's start with the epoxy first. Oh, this is coming off nice. Okay. All right, well evidently epoxy works very well with plastic. Hmm. I'm starting to think that this, uh, this vinyl ester was a little old because it, uh, it, just, it just doesn't feel right. Now, the way I'm going to be testing the, uh, I guess, the stiffness of these strips is, you know, maybe a little bit crude, but that's right. I like to keep things simple. You know, it's le the, the less you complicate things, the, uh, the easier it is to understand. So now, to start off, this is going to be the, uh, well, it's upside down, but this is the 5 to 1 strip, the 5 to 1 total boat epoxy strip. And I'm just going to bridge it across there, and I'm going to set a little weight on top and then measure to see what the, uh, how much deflection there is you know, off of the table. So I think everything looks pretty well centered. Now on this, this is coming down off the table. This is 2 and 7 eighths of an inch. So let me write that down. 2 7 eighths inch. Now this is the, the two to one total boat epoxy. And 
And this is it's flexing down a little bit more. It's two and three quarter inch. Now the vinyl, I, like I said, I'm not. I don't think that this actually set up properly. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, vinyl ester. The reason a lot of people it's not used very often is because, well, vinyl ester just goes bad on you too quickly. It, it doesn't have a shelf life to it. Um, it only lasts about three months from the date that it's actually manufactured, and that's different than than the date that it's opened. I mean, from the date that it's manufactured, it only has about three months. So again, I don't, I don't think this is going to be a fair test for it, but well, we'll just kind of see what it does. Huh. Oop, don't fail me now. Uh, this one's coming down you know, about two inches. So the vinyl was two inches. And lastly is the polyester resin. And this is two and three quarter. So what does this actually show us? Well, for one, I think it needs a couple things need to be taken into consideration. And for one, this was just a one-off, very basic, very simple test. Pretty crude, actually. But for as simple as it was, it, it, it showed me what I was what I, it showed me what I was looking for. And and actually, I was a little surprised by the results. Now, going, coming into this, I was fully expecting the epoxy to be the stiffest, which it was. At least one of them was. The the five to one was the stiffest, and I think that one deflected. Uh, a quarter inch less than the other two samples. Now, the vinyl ester, I'm just going to put that in a circular file because it, it didn't cure properly. Just I, I'm certain that it was just way too old. So that one, that one's going to be taken out of the result files. <laughs> but the, uh, but what, what, what was a little surprising was the fact that the two to one and the polyester came in at the, at the same level. And, you know, that was a little surprising because I was expecting the two to one to flex a little bit less than the polyester. But it didn't. So that's kind of interesting, and that's going to help me make my decision as far as what material I want to be using on the four deck of this Bertram. Now, just because of the, the cost savings and how fast the material uh, sets up and, you know, and how easy it is to, to wet out the glass and everything else, uh, I'm actually leaning towards using the, using the polyester resin up on this deck. Um, but I haven't decided quite yet. We'll have to, I'll, I'll, I'm going to think about that one. Now, one other thing that I, I do want to kind of mention here. Now, this was just a single layer, and you know, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, well, that didn't seem to be very strong at all. Well, something to keep in mind is that the strength of a laminate comes from being a laminate, actually meaning having more than one, one layer of material on it. When you, regardless of what it, whatever material you're using, if you're just you know, applying a single layer, you're not going to get a whole lot of strength out of that. The strength and the stiffness comes from having multiple layers stacked on top and, and then all bonded together. And on that note, I think I'm going to cut the video off here because I, I want to give this a little bit more thought and I need to get some materials ordered so that everything is here on time for, you know, when I need it. So I hope uh, you found the video interesting and well, even better yet, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And questions, comments, as always, please leave those down below and I'll do my best to get back with you. And until next time, thanks for watching. This has been a Boatworks Today Protection.